Roland A. Temme, TMCO Incorporated, Lincoln. Originally from Wayne, Nebraska, Roland Temme earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from UNL in 1969. He was asked to set up a manufacturing facility in Rogers, Arkansas, but proposed to do the work in Nebraska. Roland founded TMCO by renting a shack between the railroad tracks at 6th and J Street in Lincoln. He was a one-man operation working 18 hours a day, seven days a week, machining parts for Magnifax cassette tape duplication machines. If you do good work, people will ask you to do more. This is a reputation built company never had a salesperson. Even today we have uh, virtually no salespeople. Since the beginning, it's been Roland's dream to have the total manufacturing company. Uh, so TMCO is a total manufacturing company. Uh, you know, we call it also a job shop. What that mean? A customer walking to us with a, a print and ask us to build this thing for them. It doesn't matter what that thing Anything deal with the sheet metal, machining, uh, welding, power cutting, assembly. At present, TMCO has grown to over 300,000 square feet of production space in four buildings and employs a dynamic and diverse workforce of 205 individuals. TMCO takes pride in acquiring the latest technologies available. New technology comes at a high price. And we, in fact, we have a whole new laser system that will probably come into this company that's uh, in excess of $4 million. Almost every week, we have about minimum of 50 to 100 students tour the company to show them technologies, you know. Um, a lot of these uh, kids, after the tour, they said, do you guys have job position open there? I want to work in the company. TMCO has expanded several times over the years, including the acquisition of National Manufacturing in 1985. In 1997, they expanded into sheet metal fabrication and created a new division, Metal and Art, specializing in the creation of artwork largely from recycled materials. It grew by reputation. And not only that, it also became good advertising for us. And quite frankly, a way to give back to the community. Nebraskans may recognize TMCO's iconic art pieces, such as the Sunken Gardens Dome, Lincoln Children's Zoo letter blocks, or the markers which guide visitors to the Haymarket District from the Lincoln Airport. He also gives back to the community with which he, he resides uh, in the form of, of time, talent, and treasure, uh, not only at Lincoln, but in the state of Nebraska. Roland has been involved with Junior Achievement, the Lincoln Children's Zoo, United Way, and serves as a teammate's mentor. He has also been recognized for his commitment to providing employment opportunities to immigrants and refugees. My friends adopted a family through Lutheran Family Services, and they belong to a large church. And one day he called me up and he said, Roland, would you by chance have any work for the, the father of this family needs to find work? We sat down across the table in my office, and uh, uh, oh my goodness, he had a smile on his face. And, and today, today that person has a family, I think of three, has a, his own house, has an SUV, and he operates one of these press brake machines. And then you see all of the, the employees from different countries and you hear all the different languages. So it's great to come to work and see people just meshing together. He doesn't look at it as though he's got uh, 200 employees. He looks at it as he has 200 families that he works with and supports. TMCO's success is often attributed to Roland's servant leadership and humble personality. He never seeks out uh, personal praise. And whenever we have any kind of promotional things or even small awards here and there. It's always company first. On behalf of all TMCO employees, Tom, congratulations. Uh, we love you and uh, we're proud of uh, you and uh, uh, we are uh, honored to work under your leadership.
Sorry, it got a little wrinkled. Well, first of all, you know, only God can make these kind of things happen. I mean, it's unbelievable. And first, I want to give thanks to my family. It's God family. My family is right here. And I will quickly introduce my oldest brother, Fritz, who took over the family farm, and his son, Doug. My sister, Carolyn, whom I lived with when I came back to school. Thank you, Carolyn. And her daughter, Beth. They made me good students. They made me study. I was a pretty good student, I think. Yeah, Mike, Julian, and his wife, Deb. And then Judy Tenney, who is my identical twin's wife, and her friend is Beth, no, I'm sorry, get it, Jean, sorry, Jean Bevinson from Columbus. So I'd like to, you know, let's give him a hand for coming. <laughs> and I want to say, you know, I think to be a farm boy is pretty special, especially in a large family in the early days. And I want to thank my, I'm the baby of the family. Um, and when I was little, I saw the workhorses, lots of them. And then to my good fortune, my older brother and sisters used the horses. So by the time I grew up, I got to use the steel wheel tractors and the rubber wheel tractors. Wow, that was something. So. Thank you for all the family that, you know, we learned how to work hard. We learned how to work together. We ate together and we prayed together. Pretty special. Secondly, I want to thank some special people from TMCO. Real special people. You saw Anwar Rita in the video. Anwar Rita, would you stand up, please? He is... He is the president of TMCO. He is one of these refugee immigrants that came and came up through the ranks. His story is so incredible. And today he is the president. Thank you, Anwar. And... His brother, Rafael. It's just like him. So, Rafael, would you stand up? I want to honor you. And Rafael is our CFO. And these two guys, the story is so incredible. I cannot tell the story. But I can tell you, these are the kinds of stories that motivate you. I mean, I can't feel sorry for myself when I hear the stories of the refugee community that works at TMCO. So thank you both Anwar and Rafael. Okay? Also, I want to thank my family, my wife, my wife Hiroko, Hiroko is from Japan, daughter Diane, and son David. Would you guys stand up please? Please. You know, the company started in 1974. We got married in 1980. And, you know, I gotta tell you, Hiroko, how lucky that is. Because at least six years went by. And you saw the picture of that early, that little building there? That was a work of art, let me tell you. So, <laughs> no woman would have ever, ever hung with me. <laughs> So thank you, David and Diane. You are the best. And uh, you know, this company wouldn't be where it's at without you, so thank you very much. And so Diane's husband, Stu, is here. Stu is from the UK, appreciate that. And I want to introduce my good friends, Jerry and Janet Granger. You know, Jerry wouldn't want me to say anything, 
But I have to tell you, I didn't go to school to learn to be a machinist. I didn't. But, you know, it's like learning to play the violin. Diane can tell you this. If you have a good mentor, it's the best way to learn. So thank you, Jerry, for being my special friend and my mentor. And then finally, <laughs> at, at that table, there's another very special person. And you know by now I love machines. I love expensive machines. Yeah. And every machine that comes in the door has to be wired up. Larry Hans and his wife are here. And Larry wired up every machine from day one. And I mean, he really did a good job powering everything up. And I want to thank you, Larry. That is a special relationship to have, especially when you need to know all of the wiring and what's been there. And Lord knows we moved some machines two or three times for you too. So you've got a little extra work. So thank you very much. And your wife is with you tonight. Thank you so much, very much. And then finally, there's another table of special people. And I'm going to put this in a story form a little bit. You know, in the program, I, I have to say something about Wendell Tallickson. Wendell Tallickson was an audio engineer at Back to the Bible Broadcast. And his story is a success story. You know, when companies buy a new machine, they sometimes don't work. Yeah, sometimes new machine tools too, by the way. Anyway, Wendell was the technician that made it work. And you know what he did? He went back to Chicago and bought the company. It was a one-man inventor who invented it. But Wendell made it work, and Wendell started his own company. Well, Wendell wanted to move to Arkansas, retire, and have his son take over the business. And one day, it's in the program, he came to me, and he said, Roland, how would you like to come down to Arkansas and establish a machining company for him? Actually, just to do the machine work. And Wendell had a, had a plan, a new factory building and uh, a residence house for himself and his wife and for his son, Dennis. And in the back of the factory, he said, Roland, there's going to be a little place for you. Yeah, so see Hiroko? <laughs> I, I mean, it was a great, great idea. And you know, when you have the opportunity to start a company, I mean, you, you, you kind of get goosebumps and excited, and you say, Lord, help me. And so, when I said to Wendell, I will get back with you. And when I got back with him, I said, Wendell, you asked me to build this company for you machining in Arkansas. And I pointed to my heart and I said, Wendell, I need to do it in Lincoln. The little boy says, do it in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I thought sure Wendell would say, well, I need somebody closer. But he didn't. He said, Laura, I just want you to do the work. I said, okay, let's go. Okay, so I found that little metal shack between the tracks, and the rest is history. <laughs> now, I want to share this story. You know, when you start a company with the Sears lathe, World War I equipment, World War II equipment, you know, you know you need to upgrade sooner than later. And I wanted to share this story about a company, Greg Buck in Minneapolis, established a sales office in Omaha, and his salesman, John Kansky, they came in and told me about this new German machine tool. I gotta tell you, it was awesome. It was way above my budget. But when you have a good banker like Dan Black, no problem. Okay, so we bought that machine 
And guess what? Amazing. Ten years later, ten years later, Klaus comes to Nebraska Omaha and sets up an assembly plan. And everybody goes up and throws out their calling card, including me. And guess what? That machine tool that we bought, that German machine tool that we bought, would you believe they had the exact same tools in their factory in Germany? Well, we got the privilege of getting a contract to build their grain bins for their combines. And it gets better than that. You know, they were so kind, and since we're going to build these grain bins, they wanted to take me to Germany. It's nice to see the factory. And I told you what I saw. They had the exact same machines that I had at TMCO. But it even gets better than that. Down the road, a 10 minute drive, is a small farming community called Fairsmold. My dad lived in Germany until he was 13 years old. At that community. And this company, on a later visit, thanks Mike, takes me to this village to see where my dad lived, the church he went to. Unbelievable. That is a good customer. So I want to pay tribute to Klaus, and here from Klaus is Maury Sauls, and Maury is the retiring president of operations. So we need to give Maury a farewell, a Nebraska farewell. He's, he's an Iowa boy, but we always have good fun when the games come together. And his replacement is Matt Restow. And welcome to Nebraska, man. And then, Mike Vondra. It was Mike who took me to that little village. So thank you, Mike. And last, there are always those good people that, you know, supply you with the really important things. And our business is a metal. And there's a group of three guys from EMJ, long, loyal customers and suppliers for 40 years. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ben. And thank you. Sometimes it's embarrassing, you know. David. Sorry, David. So finally, all I want to say, thank you to the State Chamber for this incredible honor. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, it is really, I have to thank all of the employees. And I pay special tribute to all of the, the refugee people that have come into the company. They've become very, very... A part of part of, they become part of the company, part of the story, and I want to pay special tribute to Governor Ricketts just for helping Nebraska be. Nebraska is the best place for any refugee to find a home, to work, and hopefully their dream will come true, too. just like my dream has come true. Unbelievable! So, thank to the state chamber for all you do, and thank everybody, and thanks to all the employees at TMCO who really are a part of this. Thank you very much.